Hello everyone and welcome to Mod Development in Kerbal Space Program. In this video I want to introduce the first launcher I've actually made for Kerbal Space Program. This is the Pegasus XL. You might have seen the rocket profile video of it, except in that video I had used procedural SRBs from procedural parts. And that was such a frustrating experience that I decided to make my own model of it. Uh, procedural SRBs, uh, not really fun to work with and not really accurate in terms of the empty mass of the stages well and also not particularly accurate as far as the ISPs because it uses tech levels to manage the ISPs so yeah I decided that uh, making this would be a good test of my rocket design capabilities uh, it's somewhat ironic because I don't even like the launcher and I really hate SRBs but if I'm gonna have SRBs, I might as well have them look proper. Now, the wing pieces are not part of my little mod, which I will link in the video description. Uh, those are just B9 procedural wings, and same with the tail fins. It's just the center portion here, and that's three stages plus the instrument unit. And uh, you can sort of see the instrument unit here. And we're uh, carrying up a little payload. I don't know if it's actually gonna make orbit. I have no idea. Um, there are numerous problems with this that I'm also making the videos so that I can get input on. And so one of them is that this uh, hard point um, seems to go with the rocket, even though I attach the hard point onto the body first, like you should. And uh, even if I put a decoupler there, it seems to go with the body as well. So I don't know what's going on with that. I had saved the, the Pegasus as a sub-assembly. But anyway, let's get it up to altitude and we'll talk more about it at that point. And we're going off to the side here. Someone had asked about Launcher 1 and I will work on that as well. In fact, I've got the body of a 747. Uh, so a custom body for a 747 so that it looks proper without having all this sort of tank clipping that you see on this uh, Lockheed L-1011. I wait until we get a lot more velocity just because I don't want to scrape the Pegasus's uh, tail fins off so that's why we're taking off at that high velocity because of rotation the thing is the real Pegasus this top fin actually tucks into a recess in the body so it actually hangs down it's actually higher up than this one is I've tried to extend the landing gear down a bit to compensate but it's uh it's not quite enough, so we, we are at risk of scraping that, and maybe I should just move it further forward, come to think of it. People have asked why I wanted cities in Kerbal Space Program, why, you know, I was working on that, and it's mainly, you know, so that I can do stuff with planes. I know most people spend all their time on rockets, heck, even I spend most of my time on rockets, but um, planes are nice too. And it's tough to find a simulator where you can easily build a replica plane or build an experimental plane. And uh, we're going quite fast for under 10,000 feet. Um, and see how it works, you know. And with Faramir Space, uh, Faramir Space is very, very high level technology for, <laughs> for any quote unquote game. Uh, it's. Uh, it's well worth uh, playing around with planes since we have fair mirror space. And if you're gonna play around with planes, having some cities would be nice. I'm mainly thinking about cities close to launch locations anyway. So, uh, currently working on Tampa, since that's on the flight path back into Cape Canaveral. Like if you're landing with a shuttle. Um, and of course I had uh, looked at Orlando. Probably LA would be a good one, and uh, there are towns near Kuru and uh, the Indian launch site, and there's hardly anything near Tanagashima in Japan, but, and Baikonur, not many buildings around, but, you know, we'll see. So those are the kinds of locations I was thinking of. Although a token New York or London would be great, but you can't really get all of New York and all of London anyway. You can get like one neighborhood, but uh, trying to get uh, all of Manhattan would take quite a lot of work, and it wouldn't look right anyway. Uh, that's a job for professionals. 
So just to note, the first stage does not have gimbling. Uh, this should work in stock. The plumes won't look particularly good though. Real plumes does help. Uh, the second and third stage do have gimbling, as they should. I have not put on the nitrogen roll control thrusters, so if you want roll control you should probably put those on, but I, I, I didn't do that just yet. But honestly, with the procedural SRBs, even with uh, this setup, it's pretty frustrating to try and fly the Pegasus. It's, uh, it's a tough one. There's a lot of flip potential. And, uh, I mean, and it's actually flip potential on staging, really. And there's all sorts of where am I controlling from issues, and you'll see some of that, I think. One of the interesting things is, uh, of course, this part is its root right now because I needed to attach it directly to that. The node attach on this part is right there at the top of it so that it attaches properly to whatever. Um, but having that be the root part of the subassembly does potentially cause problems. On the other hand, as far as the fact that this hard point gets stuck to it and any other decoupler, I've tried numerous others, ends up getting stuck to it instead of staying with the body of the aircraft. Um, the fact that that's the root part means that it'll stay with that while we will switch vessels to control the rest. The thing is to make sure that we switch vessels quickly enough and then we should be alright maybe. <laughs> maybe. But if you can tell me how to fix that particular decoupler problem that'd be great. I haven't done this sort of thing much, but I imagine a lot of people who do like warplanes and stuff like that probably have done it a little bit more. Okay, we should start increasing our speed here. The L-1011 doesn't look perfect, but uh, it does operate very nicely, actually. Um, quite to my delight, uh, you know, I, I had to test this, the plane, and you know, I had uh, just left it climbing and walked away because it takes a long time to climb and I just went ahead and did something else and sure enough it ended up uh, getting to uh, zero climb right about where its service ceiling really is so it's uh, stated service ceiling so that was nice I have put thrust curves on the SRBs but I don't know if they're the right thrust curves they're thrust curves from equivalent star or caster style SRBs. But um, yeah, I don't know. These are Orion SRBs and nobody, I don't think anybody's added these particular SRBs to Realism Overhaul. I tried to find some. But it's not in the ATK pack as far as I know. Unless they've added new stuff to it. Yeah, it's sort of a missing element in Realism Overhaul, as far as I can tell. So that was one motivation for making it, because I, it felt like nobody had. Now, to fill up the SRB with the appropriate amount of HTPB, I went by fuel mass rather than by burn time. So... Apparently this is how much fuel it's supposed to have, and I set the dry mass of the body according to what was on B14643, the, the website that uh, a lot of rocket information comes from. I do have the Orbital ATK catalog, which uh, they posted online, and uh, I grabbed it right before they got sold to Northrop Grumman. And that has a lot of information that maybe I could take a look at. Okay, I think we're at a good height and speed for the release point. Though, I think they actually released it a little bit higher, like 40,000 feet. I'm gonna pitch up because at, when we release it, uh, it tends to pitch down, the Pegasus does, so... Um, I'm just gonna pitch up here. And then I'll point at prograde, which will be higher than horizon, and then hopefully Pegasus will not pitch down so much after we release it. Okay, 
So there and release, Let's change and burn. So first of all, uh, because of our control point, uh, okay. Whoa, it flipped on me. Oh shoot. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm using the auto. Um, what, what is it? Atmospheric autopilot fly by wire so that confused me for a little bit but for some reason it's always this is always sideways and I'm not entirely sure why it was like that with procedural SRBs too after I subassembled it and brought it out I didn't rotate it in any way so I don't know why it's sideways it's one of those curious things So this has, to the best of my knowledge, the right ISP and thrust. And I'm just maxing out, in this case, yaw, it ought to be pitch, but... Did the coupler come with it again? Yeah, uh, I mean, that part, the hard point is still with it. Okay, uh, we should coast for a little bit, and that's to get out of the thicker part of the atmosphere. Well, thicker, I say, but this part of the atmosphere so that it doesn't flip. You can see aerodynamics is holding us just fine, and we can check that by the yaw. Okay, um, let's go. And now we're oriented correctly, <laughs> uh, though SAS might be helpful. And we really don't need to go up so much. I'm gonna make sure I'm controlling from the actual core here. The instrument unit. Double check that. And we can separate the fairings. The fairings are so... I, I made the fairings especially because the fairings are not symmetrical. There is a right side and a left side. The right side doesn't have the nose cone bit. Um, I, just, I might have to work on the whole decoupling thing. <laughs> that probably wasn't ideal. Well, here's where roll thrusters might have been useful. I think it's three degrees of gimbal on this. Okay. And now we can just coast and wait a little bit. There aren't any RCS thrusters on here right now, so... Again, probably want to put those on. Uh, there should be a collider down here for you to attach those. Uh, I don't think I put a collider on the nozzle part itself. It looks a little bit floaty, I don't know why. It is directly attached to that tank bit. Probably this, uh, this bit extends all the way up here. There's an actual decoupler here. Because you can't, uh, I have had trouble building in a decoupler on a part that also has an engine. And I didn't want to make a separate decoupler part when we already had procedural decouplers. So in order to put this together, you got payload, decoupler, uh, it's the Pegasus instrument unit. And then uh, all these parts will pop up if you uh, type in Pegasus in the search function of the VAB or SPH. Uh, Pegasus um, XL Stage 3, the Orion 38. And then this is, up, and then you need to put a decoupler here and then Pegasus XL Stage 2, Orion 50 XL, and then there is a custom interstage, so there's a Pegasus interstage, and then the Pegasus first stage, with a, which is an Orion 50 SXL, and then you'll have to put on the B9 procedural wings for the fins and all, but that should be fairly simple since the shape of the fins is very simple. And as you can see, um, fairly effective as far as controlling the craft as long as you coast a little bit after the first stage burnout. Now the final stage lasts for about a minute, it's a minute and let's say 10 seconds. We're pointing a bit above the horizon. I don't know if we're actually going to get to orbit this time. Sometimes it carries a fourth stage which is, which is hypergolic for more precise maneuvers. I haven't put that in. 
uh, but the engines for that hypergolic stage are part of either niche parts or forgotten real engines. I think it's niche parts. It's the MR107. So that engine has already been made, so I didn't think that I would need to do a duplicate of that. Okay, here we go. I don't know if it's reading the Delta V properly, we'll see. If it is, we get to orbit. If it's not, we won't. Uh, the plume could do with some work. I should move that down a bit. So, in the pack, you'll have a plume that's moved down somewhat. The plume is dependent on real plumes. If you're using this in stock, you're going to have to delete the RO configuration file in the Pegasus folder. No, we didn't quite make orbit. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. Um, I wonder what the mass of the payload is. Uh, it's uh, 434 kilograms. It's possible that with different stuff. I don't know. I don't know what's quite wrong with it. It should be able to lift this payload to orbit, but... Uh, perhaps you guys can give me some some information or feedback about what I might be getting wrong there. Obviously, a lesser payload could easily easily be delivered to orbit, but this one apparently was a little bit too much. As far as I know, I got the masses right, but perhaps uh, the wing masses were too much, and I also might need to subtract, subtract that a little bit more out of the mass of the body of the first stage. So I'll think about that. But anyway, this is the Pegasus XL rocket. And, you know, it was just a sort of a quickie and an attempt to make a rocket like this. I'll work on a launcher one like this, I think. And perhaps other rockets that I think are missing from the general catalog. So on that note, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.